start the recording and I will let you take it away. So All thank right. you. All right, let me get my screen shared here. All right. Um, hi, I'm Corinne. Um, you can see on my background here, I put all my information on the other side. Sorry, it's not mirrored, so I'm on the wrong side. But um, my contact information is at the bottom there. So if you need it, it's right there for you. Um, do you uh, want to make your screen full screen? Because we're sure. seeing your I can do. Yeah, let me stop my share real quick so that you can see. Can you see that now? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so it's right. Brown at scienceinteractive.com. Um, I'm an instructional di designer for hands-on labs um, and e-science labs. They're sister companies, so I work for both of them. But today we're going to talk about hands-on labs. Um, so um, today we're really touching on um, how we've made lab sciences um, possible for universities, community colleges, high schools, um, students, and instructors. Um, so this is a presentation about our platform. And just a little background on the company, Hands On Labs was started about 13-ish years ago. Um, and the solution they wanted to do is provide an at-home science kit and curriculum for students and teachers to use um, to have distance learning lab sciences. And so, as you can imagine, that is a big deal right now. Um, so we are working very, very hard to uh, make sure that uh, we can provide quality content and those hands-on kits so that students can have those experiences um, through the semester, through quarantine, through staying at home, everything like that. Um, so, like I said, we created a platform for all of our content. Um, there were some problems in the market that we saw for instructors and students and mostly instructors, but also students. And so these are some of our, our problems that we saw that we felt we could fix. And we really wanted to make um, education accessible in especially science education and lab sciences um accessible to all students across the board and so these are some of the features that we knew that we needed to have in there along with quality um, science content and then here's what we did to solve it um, we have six scientists on staff that are writing content they all have instructor they've all been instructors at one point or another um, they all have PhDs in their respective fields that um, they write for. So one of our scientists um, got her PhD in um, biology. And so she writes a lot for our human biology and AMP and um, sciences like that. And then we have uh, an organic chemist who writes all of our chemistry and some of our physics, but mostly our chemistry. We also have a physics scientist as well. Um, but he just recently wrote general organic and biochemistry um, and organic chemistry. So we have organic chemistry online as well. Uh, but these are the things we did to solve it on our platform. Um, we also designed it because I've, I've been to some of the talks today and they've talked about making things accessible and we've talked about how PDFs are not super accessible because it's really time consuming to make them accessible. It's possible, but it's time consuming. Um, so we wanted to reduce the need for that because it's a little antiquated. We wanted to make it interactive for students. We wanted to make it responsive. Um, we wanted it to integrate with LMSs so that it's a single sign on. There is no like switching of tabs and 
going to different screens and going to different places. So we made it into an LTI tool. Um, and then we also wanted to make sure that it can be accessed on all the different devices that students are using, whether it's a desktop, a laptop, a tablet, things like that. Um, we wanted to make it responsive to do things like that. So I'm going to show you uh, an example. It's going to take a second just to load, but it is, um, it will turn, it will resize. Uh, you don't have to leave this screen to do everything that you need to do. Um, so this is just a, a short example before I get into the nitty gritty of the student experience um, of what all of that looks like for them. Um, but you can see that it, it turns with the device and it, it moves and resizes as it needs to. So we develop all of our content uh, using the 5E e method of science. So those are the 5Es. Um, we didn't use all five super specifically. They're all in there in some way or another, but we made sure to highlight the three most important that we could cover in lab sciences. So we chose to focus on explore, experiment, which is really more explaining, um, and evaluation. Um, so our exploration section is always at the top. It's always the first thing that students see. Um, that's engaging students in the content and, and what they need. And the most important part about this section, it's, it's the reading section, but um, this section contains not only the content, but it contains videos, uh, interactive elements, such as the uh, um, FET simulations for physics, for example. Um, we have an, a virtual um, microscope, which I'll show you in just a minute. Um, and then there's questions throughout that kind of chunk the information so it breaks it up for them so they're not just reading and reading and reading pages of content. Um, and then also as an instructor, you get to check their knowledge as they're reading because it is graded. So I'll show you some examples of that. Um, we always start each exploration section with the test your knowledge um, pretest. So really testing what students sh will need to know at the end of this and kind of giving them that immediate feedback of what they're going to learn and showing them in an interactive way um, what's most important for this section. Um, and then as you go through the content, as you can see, there's content and pictures, but then there's also those formative assessments in the middle, checking knowledge in between, um, making sure that we're, we're on the right page, there's immediate feedback, there's remediation, so they can go back and see where they got it wrong or what reread read it again so that they can double check um, all their answers when it comes to the evaluation section. Um, and then we really wanted to make sure, and I, I'll hi I highlight it here, that this multimedia approach to science and learning really um, helps students with visualizing it, seeing it. This is a lab like content. And so when students aren't actually in a lab with a, um, a lab manager or a teacher or um, a graduate assistant teaching the lab, this is where they can see what we're talking about. Some of this may be covered in a lecture prior to the lab section, but we want to reinforce this because we know that this is information that they will need to have and need to know prior to um, doing the experiments and exercises. Um, I'm going to touch on that immediate feedback again. Like I said, you can see here as a student answers a question, it's going to give them that immediate feedback and some remediation um, before they move on. Uh, if they needed to go back, they absolutely can, um, but then they'll move on and they can they get a chance to correct 
their answer in the evaluation later. Um, and then moving on to the experimentation portion, which is probably the most important portion of a lab, obviously. Um, we try to make this also as multimedia as possible so that students, if they have questions, they have resources, they have pictures, they have videos to see how to set that up so that they can be successful and safe. So I will go through and show you a little bit of that. Here's um, kind of a view of what students see. This is our material section and then it moves into the instructions. You can see all the photos in there, really breaking it down for students. Um, we wanted to give them as much content as they needed and as much as possible that was gonna help them be successful. Um, so this is just a great example of how we break it down. Some of our experiments have videos, some of them it doesn't. It's not necessary, so we add pictures. Um, and then at the bottom here, there is the long answer portion to the lab. So this is where you're really getting that summative assessment of this experiment um, through that long answer. This is graded by teachers once the students are finished with the labs. Um, here's an example I told you about our virtual microscope. We call it our V-scope. Um, something important about this is, once again, students don't have to leave our site or leave the platform, really, to continue doing their work. Um, this is an all-in-one kind of experience for them so that it, you know, if you're on a tablet, let's say, you could do this easily on a tablet. You wouldn't have to use a mouse. This is, you know, you can touch and slide. Um, this is done on a desktop as a recording because that's easier, but, um, but you can use it and you don't have to download any other applications. It's all housed within our platform. Um, and then we also have within the experimentation section, we have data tables that um, just expand within the platform. So it's not another tab, it just expands and closes, it auto saves. Um, you can switch between the tabs um, of the different exercises and house all of the data there. And then it puts it in a nice format for instructors to see when the student is done, all the work that they've done in a nice table format. And then photos are in the same place. Um, we highly encourage students to take, I mean, for instructors to have students take photos of what they've done because that is um, a great body of proof that you've done the work that you need to do. Um, and so uploading those photos is super simple. You, you can see that all we had to do is click and drag. You could click on it and search for it in your downloads. Super easy. You could do that on a tablet as well. Um, so that's a really great feature. And I'm going to pause here if there's any questions for just a second. I'm looking in the chat and the Q&A and I don't, oh, I do have one. Is this digital, um, is a digital expert available for others to use? Um, in, in, in what way? It may be, I can also allow him to, to do you want to, here, I'm going to allow them to, oops, to talk. Sure. If he wants to unmute Sukana and ask the question online was the question. So this is all hosted online, absolutely. Um, it's not an open resource. This is um, a resource that comes with the agreement of using our kits, our hands-on kits. We don't have any fully digital because we do believe that hands-on is still really, really important um, for students to have. And so we, we have the um, agreement with instructors that their students are going to purchase our kits, kind of like textbooks, um, and use those kits. And so it's not an open resource. This digital content does come with the purchase of those kits. 
Um, but yeah, it's not an open resource if that was your question. Yeah, the question is yes. Yeah, every, yeah, it can be purchased, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that in his chat, perfect. That's a great now question. Now there's another question. Can you show an experiment larger? It's hard to see on your screen, even though I'm, oh yeah, so yeah, there, is there a way to make your, the screen that you're sharing bigger? Like zoom in on that part of it to remove maybe uh, the, the top part. Yeah, sure. Maybe, maybe not. I'll, I will pull one up for you um, in just a second. This, this presentation is not gonna go larger, unfortunately, okay. but I will pull up um, this, the student side of that in just a second, but I'm going to keep going and I'll get back to the um, bigger showing kind of what that looks like. Perfect. Thanks. Um, okay. I'm going to move on to the evaluation section. So this is something that a lot of instructors requested be there because, um, you know, not being in person, it's harder to evaluate everything that that student knows for a lab section. So we created a pretty robust summative assessment of each section. Um, so I'm going to show you kind of what that looks like. Um, call it a competency review, call it, call it an assessment, but this is after a student has gone through and answered all the multiple choice questions. It gives them immediate feedback um, and then they can move on to the question, the extension question, which is another great way to expand that knowledge that students have learned within the lab itself. And so that applied knowledge that they learned um, and expand upon that. And then at the end, this, um, this report prints out of everything that that student has done. Um, they can go back to the experimentation section and make sure that they've answered everything. As you can see, this student didn't because it was me and I didn't need to. <laughs> as an example, but then um, it can be submitted. They can also download a PDF for their own copies. Um, a great way to really have that summative grade. Um, and with this, we also, with the LTI tool, I'll just touch on this kind of grading part, um, that grade from the entire lesson that they just did can be moved over automatically to the LMS. So, it, it's a seamless LTI tool that does that auto grading portion for you. There is a little bit of work because there are those short answers in the photos and the data tables. Um, but otherwise, you don't have to manually input those grades. Our tool will do that for you. Um, so these are, this is just a quick list of some of the instructor features that we have within our platform. Um, I'm going to touch on a bunch of them, so I'm just going to pass over this real quick. Um, this is an example, I blurred out names because these are grades, um, but this is our grade book. So you can click on a student, click in, you can see um, that these first two sections, those were the previous like questions throughout the content and things like that. This would be um, an example of one that a, an instructor would need to add comments or grade um, throughout. You could see those, um, and I'll click on it again and have it play. But you can see those brown circles next to the students' names. Those are the ones that need to be completed by instructors. But once all of that data is submitted, um, that's when it moves over from our platform to your platform with that final grade. You can see down towards the bottom there is that um, this whole um, grade with a, with a final total in it as well. Um, and then you can also adjust how much, um, as this video plays through again, I'll show you, um, it will adjust how much you, you can adjust as an instructor, excuse me, um, how much each thing is worth and really, you know, customize that uh, point total for your class and what works for you as an instructor. Um, we do have some analytics that we target um, on the students just for you as an instructor to see. Um, we have course completion analytics. We have time spent 
on each lesson for those students and you can see as we scroll through that it um, changes and shows you different things and then um, the student overview gives you kind of a very clean snapshot of what those students have done, what they've completed, what they're working on. The green ones mean that those are completed. This gray one over here, I know it's pretty small, um, shows you that the, it's been started. Um, so that's, that's a great feature to have on the dashboard. And then you can also add notes within our content. Um, you can see I, we just clicked on that blue line that pops up in between each section for instructors. And you can type notes there. You can add any pictures you need there. You can add a video there as an instructor. Um, that's a great feature. Tons of instructors love to use that one. Um, and then um, it's accessible. You all know what that means, I hope. Um, I didn't want to bore you with the accessibility portion of it. Um, and then I've, ta I've touched on this briefly. We do integrate as an LTI tool into um, D2L, Brightspace, Blackboard, Canvas, and Moodle. Um, I work very closely with instructors to help make sure that they're successful with that um, for HOL, which is great. Um, and then we do get a lot of questions about student safety. Um, we have worked really hard to make sure that all of the experiments that we write and all of the chemicals and materials we provide are as safe and as benign as possible. Um, there are times when we do need to send out some chemicals and all of our students do have to go through our lab safety um, section. It is required of every single student who runs through hands-on labs. Um, and that really lays it out. It's kind of like the lab safety that you would do at the very beginning of a in-person lab as well. So um, there's more information on that. This whole presentation is on um, Quality Matters as well. So this is a link that you can see and I can um, show you where that is. It's just on HOL um, Science, my other tab here, um, holscience.com as well. Um, and then here's kind of a brief view of what that looks like as well. It's in the same format as all of our other lessons are, but it's really based on safety. Um, really lays it out, really gives them all the resources that they need to make sure that they're safe doing those labs at home. And I think I was just going to show this one last page. Yeah, this is a great page. Um, gives a lot of information, a lot of warnings, um, a lot of things to think about, who to contact if things aren't going well. Um, but it's, it's one of our top priorities. So we make sure that all of our students have this um, when they go through our courses. Um, and then as we talk about labs, we also talk, have to talk about the distance learning portion of it. It's not um, foreign to us. We are here to help. We're here to support. Um, we really want students to be able to access that lab science, especially if they're at a distance from their school, um, especially if they're not able to do it in person. We want to make sure that that content is comprehensive and quality and the materials that we provide help them be successful in their lab sciences. And then here we are. So um, as we go through this, we are here to help. Um, I will show you some more resources. You guys did want to see some um, other things. I'm going to stop my share for just a second. Jim, do you want to read me those other questions too while I pull up some more stuff? I will. One of the questions is, um, what age group is the intended audience in the classes on the website? Yeah, great question. Um, so all of our um, Resources are really built for university um, level, like community college, university, um, some high school students. We have a lot of high school students, more universities though. Um, so it's really built towards those 100, 200, 300 level lab classes within the university systems. And then I think the other question I was uh, looking for, be able to see something because it 
the the evaluation was small for them to to view as well. Yeah, for sure. I will pull that up here. Um, actually, and that's those are the two questions. Unless someone else has one that they want to type in. Oh, it looks like we can send you a syllabus and you'll design the online course. That was another question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we, we really work very closely with all of our instructors and um, instructional designers and um, departments in the sciences to make sure that that course is um, what will work for you. We don't want to just push a product on to you that is more than you need or less than you need. So we work to um, really make that all um, catered to instructors and what they need and, um, and all of that. So it is loading and then I will go ahead and share my screen. There was a follow-up question to that one, which was, and I don't know if you wanna answer this here or point them somewhere, um, how much? <laughs> um, that is um, the question, always the question, right? Yeah. Um, it, it depends. It depends on the kit. Um, it depends on if it's a microbiology kit, it might be on the pricier side. Um, if it is a physics kit, it might be on the cheaper side. Um, it really depends on the subject. It really depends on um, how many of our lessons you're going to use, what materials are included in those lessons. Um, it's a very intense con um, conversation with our sales team and with our scientists to make sure that it is the right price, but also fits your class. And so um, salespeople are always willing to work with our instructors on that price and make sure that it's right for them. And we want to make sure that that product that we provide you um, is right for you. Um, go ahead. Oh, there's, uh, just I think a follow up to that, um, which I think you've probably already said, but uh, this is a little bit more detailed. So it can be custom made to meet the learning objects uh, within the class. Yeah, yeah. So sending those syllabuses really help us because then we can um, very, very specifically tailor that course to whatever it is that the instructor needs. Mm -hmm. um, this is just a, a demo course. So you can kind of see, can you guys see it a little more clearly? or is it still pretty small? Um, I can read this one if people want to put in the chat if, they, if, they're, if, if, if they'd like it blown up or is that just waiting for people to put in the chat if they have any? Um, I have one that says they can see it. Okay, perfect. Um, I will leave it on this then. Um, so this is just that course dashboard again that I was showing you. Um, I don't have any students in here because this is just my demo course, but you can see that we um, can flip through the different subjects. Um, and I can't show you a live course anyways because students information, but um, yeah, this is what this one looks like very specifically. And then this is the student view as well um, of all, all of our lessons. I'll flip back and go to the lessons list again. Oh, here we are. Um, you can add comments here um, or notes for the students. Um, each lesson can be locked and unlocked. Um, very specifically, I wanted to see a little bit more of the lessons themselves. So this is um, where every lesson would start. It would always start with this exploration, experimentation, evaluation, like timetable here so that students can have a really good idea of how, how long this is going to take so that they can budget their time because that's always always a big thing in distance learning. Um, and then you can see the, as it loads, um, there are test your knowledge questions like I touched on before. Um, this, in the instructor view for me as a demo course, it doesn't love me being in that, but I'll show you some other stuff in here as well. Um, I talked about those instructor notes. This is um, really that content 
we try to make it so it's not more scrolling. Um, we got to chunk it so that we have that good. Um, we don't have super overload on, on those students. Um, we also have some really fun did you know sections as well. Um, here's some more um, content questions at the end of it. Um, I'll pop into the experiment on this one just to kind of show you again. So here's an example of one of the experiments with uh, video in it, which is really helpful. Um, as that loads, there we go. And then once again, more pictures, step-by-step -step instructions. These are the data tables that you can see. This is the instructor view, so you can um, see all the answers in here. Here's some photos that we've taken to show. Um, here's up close and personal data table. I know that was pretty small, um, but that, you know, all of the parts that need to be blank would be blank for students, but this is the instructor view. Um, and then there's another data table. All of this gets auto-saved when students input anything in here. Um, they can just collapse that and it gets saved um, and they keep going down. Any other questions I haven't captured? I am waiting to see. I am not seeing any right now. Okay. Anything else? Anybody wants to see anything else that I can show them digitally? I don't have a kit with me, unfortunately, but because we're at home. <laughs> Just waiting to see if anyone types a question in. I'm not seeing any more questions. Okay. Great. Well, I just want to um, say thank you all for uh, coming. Um, please feel free to reach out. I'll, I'll put my information up um, in full screen in just a second. Feel free to reach out to me. Feel free to reach out um, on our website, um, which I will actually... Um, is here. Um, it's just holscience.com. If it'll go back. Um, yeah, lots of resources. Thank you so much for coming. We have um, all of our scientists are happy to help, all of our salespeople. I'm here to help with any um, designing questions for a lab class. Um, yeah, so this is, this is the place to go. You can absolutely contact us through this website. Um, contact me, you have my contact information and I'll stop the shares just in case you need to see that again. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Well, maybe there's, I had one more thank you and then I put a survey in uh, for people to answer. So if it takes some time to do that. And other than that, just checking one more time. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And then I will say that uh, this is the room that the town hall is going to be in at 430. So for anyone who is still around, please uh, come back at 430. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much. And thanks for uh, thanks for sharing that. That was that was awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Have a good weekend. Thanks. You too. Bye. There we are. Faith, you're with me till uh, eight o'clock your time, I think, if you're East Coast. So I'm just going to hold this until until then. But we're not really starting till the bottom of the hour. So.
and Barbara and Mary Jane, you guys are here. I'll promote you guys. <laughs> It's like Barbara left because she didn't want to be part of this. I'm here. <laughs> All right. You didn't need to make me um, a panelist. I'm just I think, watching. I, <laughs> well, I think for the town hall, everyone's a panelist. Oh, really? Yeah, because it's town hall. We're all talking. Oh, my goodness. Let me check my notes to verify that. Okay, yeah. I, I definitely don't want to talk if... I think it's you and you and Mary Jane are the ones that have to do all the talking. No, it's what, it's what it I heard. Is not. It's not. what it's I heard. <laughs> yep, promote everyone to panelist. Wow. But I'm not going to do that for everyone until. All right, I am definitely not talking. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have you. We're going to have you read off the names of all the members, including all the unfamiliar names. Oh, very funny, Barbara. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm be on camera. Because I have one pair of glasses on my head, one pair of glasses on my eyes. So how long is this? How long to this start? We've got uh, 23 minutes. Hey, what'd you think of uh, the. Oh, say hi to Jenna. Do you see me? I don't know if you hi, can Jim. see Hello. Do you Denver. see me? I'm not. I'm... I see you, Jim. <laughs> Portland guy. It's All so, right. How's it out there? Four o'clock? Yeah, it's 4.07. 4 so there's about like 20 minutes, and I do not have to be involved. I just want to listen, right? Deb told me to specifically. <laughs> You're so make sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Did you go for a run today? No, I'm doing it. I mean, I'm not sure. If, are we meeting uh, Barbara afterwards for a little debrief? Because my plan is to run after that. Yeah, I think that um, Beth had suggested that. I think my um, time sitting in a seat may be uh, up uh, by that gonna, time. <laughs> I mean, I started at I started at five five thirty my time, and it's uh, four o'clock this time. So <clears throat> normally, I get a run in there to to what help. What do you think about Melody? I loved her sitting outside, just uh, relaxing. It's so different than our annual conferences. It was so relaxed and so um, soothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know if you saw the, like, some people put in those comments, it was like, this is exactly the session that I needed today. I mean, I think I read that one, but there were there were probably seven or eight others that said this was, was the best awesome. keynote. So I think it was it was the perfect, you know, sitting outside, just telling her life story with, with tips on what to do. I was like, that's a, that was a great way to do it. But yeah, that's know, really cool. Our annual conferences, we have these high energy, high, big people doing it. 